Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I'm your host, Eric Smith, and today I am talking about Hell by Judith Sonnet. And this book is about uh, one of the gates of hell is opening in the town of Downwich, and only a horror author and a young psychic girl can hopefully stop it. That is the quickest nutshell, because we're going to get into some stuff um, right off the bat. I don't know if I'm going to make this a thing. This will be the second video in a row where I give you the what I'm going to, what's called, I didn't make this up, the too long didn't watch, five out of five stars. I absolutely loved this book, but it is not for everybody. Uh, first of all, this is a loving tribute to the crazy, gory, Italian horror of the 70s, 80s, early 90s. Um, it has multiple titles it is there you go it's right there but it is hell aka zombie gut eaters aka hell of the unholy dead aka house of the unholy dead aka the sixth gate and aka one of my favorites magic five killing worms and then there's a little note at the bottom this book has been rated x for disturbing violence and gore. And it is incredibly disturbing violence. It is incredibly disturbing gore. Uh, then there's a note before reading. Uh, and I'm going to read this note. So it'll give you a feel of what you're in for. So as I say, this is not a book for everybody. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This is a novel inspired by the tropes of 70s and 80s Italian splatter films. There are many elements to this book which will give the reader a headache if one thinks too deeply about it. Believe it or not, that is the intent. Also, in true Italian fashion, it is best to picture the dialogue as an English dub. None of the words should match the movements made by the characters' mouths. The dialogue is also weird on purpose. This is not a mistake or oversight by the author. It is an intentional and purposeful atmospheric choice. This is not a narrative novel it is an ambient one. So please, with these conditions in mind, sit back, turn on some loud music, and enjoy the visceral ride you are about to embark on. So, there you go. That's that. <laughs> and I think this is very important. Because this novel reads... Hold on, let me take a step back. I am a fan of the Italian horror that I have seen. I am not incredibly well-versed uh, as someone like Judith Sonnet or Lucas Mangum, uh, other authors, folks I know. I'm not as well-versed as they are. I have seen uh, Lucio Fulci's uh, The Gates of Hell trilogy. I've seen a little bit of Giallo, some uh, Dario Argento. Um Maybe some others. I can't remember off the top of my head. But there's so much out there that is beloved by so many people. Uh, but I am not an expert. But I will say, this: the, the movies that I have seen, especially uh, Fulci's Gates of Hell trilogy, this book absolutely feels like those movies. I love the score to City of the Living Dead, a.k.a. Gates of Hell, the first in the Lucio Fulci Gates of Hell trilogy. Love the score, and I could hear that playing in my head as I was reading this. Some of the scenes in this book could, have, could be dropped into that movie. There's a couple, there's one in really in particular that almost feels like it was pulled from that movie. Um, so, what we have is, uh, we start with this old woman who is into the occult, and she's, there's this, the trope of 
a person seeing murders through the eyes of the killer. And that's what's happening with this woman. But there's much more to it than that. And it's a killer called Mr. Gloves. It's the name of the first chapter. I'm not giving that away. Um, and he has black leather gloves. Very giallo uh, thing going on there. And then some stuff goes down. Horrible, violent, disgusting stuff goes down. We jump ahead a year. And now we're going to meet our main characters. And uh, Lori, the, uh, the trans horror author who has been invited to this party in the town of Downwich. And she doesn't, but she's been having these nightmares, which is kind of the reason she's decided to go to this party. And we meet um, the young girl, Tanith, who's been having nightmares about all these horrible things. And uh, other characters, <laughs> quite a bit of cannon fodder characters. Uh, but, but characters that seem like they might just be side characters who end up playing a bigger role. Um, and the book, it, it, there, there is a plot despite, despite the fact that this note says it is non-narrative, not, it, this is not a narrative novel. There is a narrative to it. It's disjointed just like the movies it is paying tribute to, um, and I loved it. I love the Gates of Hell trilogy by Fulci. And I loved this book. It is absolutely not for everybody. The gore is exceedingly extreme. Very much like those movies. Um, it's, there, there, there are things that don't necessarily make sense. Just like in those movies. Um, I didn't quite have the the dubbed voices in my head, um, but as I said, I could I could hear that score from City of the Living Dead, and so much of the imagery I could picture it I think more vividly because I've seen those Fulci movies and <clears throat> the characters are interesting. Despite this warning at, in, in the author's note at the beginning, um, I, I think Judith Sonnet deserves more credit than she's giving herself based on the author's note. Um, but yeah, I like the characters. I like Lori. I like Tanith. I like the other characters we've met. And this is one of Judith Sonnet's strengths, I think. Even in... Her, some of her shortest work that I've read, and I haven't read everything that she's done. I haven't come close yet. Uh, but even in, in her, the shortest works of hers that I've read, I feel she's really good at developing the characters in a very short amount of time. And so Lori is a fully developed character. Tanith is a developed character. And those around them, we get character development with these people. Up to a point... Because this is a crazy, gory Italian horror movie of a novel. Holy cow, the kills in this. Some of them, oh, absolutely loved them. Again, for what they are, they're so over the top and disgusting in some cases. Bloody. Um, not going to sit well with some people. But I loved it. Um trying to think there's <laughs> plot wise i mean the plot is mr gloves wants to open one of the gates of hell in the town of downwich some people have sort of been pulled there to try to stop him there's zombies and demons and crazy humans people being possessed visions um Demons, again, other demons. <laughs> it's wild. And I, as I said, already a number of times, I loved it. 
Plus, this cover, I think, is fantastic. Uh, this guy reminds me of the priest at the beginning of City of the Living Dead. And it's just all around, I think this is a great package. The whole, the, the, the look of the cover, the font that's used, this kind of thing down here. The gates are open and the dead hunger for living blood. Um, the fact that it has, <coughs> excuse me, the multiple titles. And um, in the back, we get a list, the movies that inspired Hell. And I've seen not nearly enough of them, but some of them. And we have a nice afterword by the author. The ending of the book, very rep reminiscent of how a lot of those movies end. I was even, I was kind of expecting, I'm like, all right. As much of this as we've gotten that's obviously inspired by all these other movies, it has to have that kind of ending. Um, I don't want to give stuff away. I probably could give a lot of stuff away without spoiling anything because this book is so crazy. But you know I don't like to spoil anything if I can avoid it. So, five out of five stars. Absolutely fantastic. But it is not going to work for everybody. Aside from the extreme, disturbing gore and violence and stuff, I just think if you if you don't like... All right, we're going to step back again. Um, if you're not familiar with the Italian horror films of the 70s and 80s, with any of the things that have inspired this, I think you could pick it up, and if you take that author's note at the beginning to heart, I think you can enjoy it, if you can handle the extreme violence and gore. I think that you could sit down with an open mind and enjoy the crazy, absolutely crazy wild ride of this book. If you are a fan of those Italian flicks, I think, like me, you're going to love this book. It is... It fits in with those movies so well. <coughs> and there's a character that's absolute piece of shit and could not wait. I couldn't wait for their demise. I always like that. Um, <laughs> as long as they get what's coming to them. So, five out of five stars, but not for everybody. I don't know how else to put that. I can't just say blanket. Everybody should read this book. It's the most amazing uh, horror novel ever written. It is what it sets out to be. It, su su it succeeds amazingly well. Uh, Judith Sonnet is becoming one of my favorite go-to authors. Uh, I don't. I, I have a fraction of the stuff that she's put out. She's reprinting a lot of her stuff. Uh, I guess uh, sort of polishing her earlier works and re-releasing them. So I'm going to be able to get my hands on that stuff. She does these 10-day cha challenges that so far have been fun. Uh, she's done it three times with other authors. And I've read the first set, The Earth Verses, inspired by 1950s sci-fi movies. That set, I've read those three. Then she's got a Splatter Crime set, Judith Sonnet, two other authors, and then just released a five-book set that's uh, Splatter at Sea or something, Deep Sea Splatter, I don't remember. I got all those. They look amazing. The covers on those are fantastic. Um, <coughs> and uh, I'm just, I'm happy to pick her stuff up. So good with character development in such a short amount of time, even though this one is probably the longest one that I have read by by Judith Sonnet. And she says she's working on uh, what she's calling a doorstopper. So, you know, a giant, like the stand or something, maybe. I don't know if it's going to be that big. Uh, but I'm looking forward to that. I want to see what she does with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages. 
Um, so there you go. Hell, Judith Sonnet, five out of five, not for everybody. What else is there to say? I don't know. You can let me know if there's more that I should be saying. But for now, my question for this video, simply, uh, are you a fan of Italian horror movies from the 70s and 80s? Uh, let, let me grab that book again. And we'll look at that list, just to, so just in case you're not familiar. Maybe you've seen some of these, didn't realize that's what we're talking about. So here's the movies that inspired hell. City of the Living Dead, The Beyond, The House by the Cemetery. Right off the bat, that's the Gates of Hell trilogy by Lucio Fulci. Zombie 2, Demonia, Suspiria, Inferno, Beyond the Door 3, Black Demons, Ghost House, The Black Cat... Zombie 5, Killing Birds, which is where the alternate title for Hell, Magic 5, Killing Worms, came from. Uh, Burial Ground, The Church, Troll 2, Demons, Anthropophagus, and Zombie Holocaust. And it looks like, just a quick glance, uh, you've got one, two, three that are early 90s. Um, but you've got some in the 70s. The majority, looks like, are the 80s. Uh, so that's just a list of the movies, the type of movies that inspired this book. Maybe you're familiar with some. Troll 2 is an interesting one to be thrown in there. Um, but it was an Italian director, writer-director, that made that movie. <laughs> um, so, have you seen, do you watch Italian horror? Are you a fan? Are you not familiar with it? Uh, do you like giallo as opposed to the crazier, over-the-top stuff? Uh, just let me know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please ignore that loud noise. That was my text indicator. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here at the Low Budget Review Show. Please like, share, and subscribe. All the usual YouTube stuff. If you'd care to follow me on other social media, as of this recording, I am still on Twitter, at Ronan5757. On Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, it's Eric Smith 5757 That's Eric with a K. E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H 5757. That's all I've got. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith, and until next time, read more books.